Hi guys, this is Mark. Welcome to Back Endless. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of a very cool feature we introduced in version 4 of Back Endless. As you know, Back Endless is an API services platform. And our goal is to make it super simple for you to integrate your mobile and web applications with the backend services. For example, you can take Java or JavaScript code, deploy into Backendless, and we automatically generate API service based on the deployed code. In fact, we create REST API and generate native client libraries so you can import them into your app and start making invocations of the deployed code. However, the, the server-side code, which is a service, may not necessarily run within Backendless. And one example of that service is Amazon Lambda. If you are not familiar with Lambda, it is essentially code that may be written in JavaScript, Java.net, you name it. AWS supports a variety of different languages. And the cool thing about Lambda, it is just the code. It is completely abstracted from the actual machine where it runs. In fact, you don't need to think about the machine. You just treat it as code. And that's why Amazon call it serverless programming. So with Backendless and the integration that we introduced, we make it super simple for you to integrate your mobile apps powered by Backendless with AWS Lambda. So check out this video where I'm gonna go through the process of how to integrate a mobile app with AWS Lambda. For the demo purposes, I'm gonna start with creating my Lambda function. I logged on to the AWS interface and here, uh, since I don't have any uh, Lambda functions in my account, uh, it prompts me to create one now. So get started now. I will select the runtime and we'll use Node.js. And uh, there is a bunch of different blueprints, which are, which are sort of templates for various functionality that AWS provides out of the box. And since this is a demo, there is one that is a, a hello world Lambda function. And uh, this is the code. It is very trivial. It accepts an object with three keys in there and it bounces back key one to the caller. I will give it a name. Let's call it hello world lambda. And also we need to select the security role that will be used uh, to invoke that function. I'll choose an existing role and that's going to be a lambda basic execution. And uh, that's pretty much it. So click next and uh, we can create this function. So now this function is in place. It can be tested uh, right from this interface. And as far as backhandless is concerned, that's all you need to have. Now it is ready to be consumed by backhandless. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I will switch back to backhandless console. And right here, uh, since Lambda is going to be the server-side business logic, we go to the business logic interface. And uh, in the section for API services, if you click plus to create a new service, you will see the AWS Lambda interface. And right here, you need to identify your account with the access key ID and the secret access key. And uh, those can be created right in the AWS interface. In fact, let me switch back and uh, I will uh, set one up right now. So now that I have my Lambda user account, I'm gonna uh, get the access key ID and the secret access key and copy them over into this interface to connect to my AWS account from Backendless. Additionally, I need to select the region where AWS Lambda is uh, going to be running, and that one is configured at the time when the Lambda function is being created. So click Save. At this point, Backendless connects to AWS, and there you go, we have uh, our API service. And as you can see, uh, REST API has already been created automatically. We can download uh, various client SDKs that will give us connectivity with our Lambda function. So now, uh, before we do this, let's uh, try a simple invocation directly from uh, Backendless console. And for this, I'm just gonna uh, create my request object. So this is the object that will be sent to AWS Lambda. Key one is the one that is actually gonna be returned back. The logging will also try to log key two and key three, if you remember from the source of Lambda, but since they're not there, they will just be 
admit it. So here, let's click Invoke. And uh, here in the response, we see it re returned 200 OK. And this is the body of the response. So now we got this Hello Lambda back into our client. And uh, which is pretty cool because here, with really without any coding, we have a fully functional REST API for the Lambda function that is running somewhere within AWS. And the next step is going to be uh, downloading the client uh, SDK and writing somewhat trivial program uh, to invoke Lambda function from, uh, from a client. One thing to note is for this Lambda function, Backendless automatically gathers analytics so we know what client has invoked this function, when and so on. But also what's more important is in your Backendless application, you may have various users and security roles and then those automatically apply to the created API service. In fact, by clicking here to set the permissions, we can apply roles permissions to the method that we have for our Lambda. And this way you can trim down security to uh, match whatever the requirements are for your application. But before uh, we go here and see how security works, let me download my, uh, let's say, JavaScript library. And here it is, I got the zip file, which contains the code for uh, invoking Lambda function. I'm going to open this in an editor and show you how that works. So here's the code that I have downloaded. Uh, take a look, there is an HTML file that imports back endless library and imports any generated JS code. And uh, here's the JS uh, code for invoking that Lambda service. In fact, there is a method that was generated, hello world lambda, and uh, right here we can just simply write some code that will be, you will see how trivial it is uh, to make the invocations of that service. So AWS lambda service, this comes from the actual service name that was assigned when I imported lambda from AWS. So right here we have, let me make it a little bit larger, uh, AWS lambda service hello world lambda and I'm gonna pass in uh, a JS object it's gonna be key one and we'll say hello from JS the uh, the generated method hello world lambda will return a JavaScript promise and uh, we can just handle it right here result and let's print it out to console that's it. So that's all it takes to invoke Lambda function from JavaScript through Backendless. Uh, in fact, let me run it in the browser. And uh, here's the uh, HTML file that I opened. And if we take a look in console, here it is. It says hello from GS. So what happened is uh, JavaScript made the invocation to Backendless. Backendless turned around, invoked Lambda in Amazon, received the response and send the response back to our JavaScript client. In fact, let's do it again. I'm going to switch to network and uh, reload the page. And uh, right here, you see that here's this result. Uh, the request went out to Backendless and we got the response from Lambda back to the uh, browser. And the same thing is true for mobile applications. Uh, if you were to download uh, Android or Objective-C clients, you can repeat exactly the same process right from uh, your mobile application. Now, we talked about the permissions, so let me uh, do one more thing. Right here in permissions, I'm going to uh, open up the permissions for roles, and I will disable access for not authenticated user for our Hello World Lambda function. In fact, uh, put this X for not authenticated user. And if I go back to my code, and then here, if I uh, put in another handle for the promise, let's say console dot log error and let's uh, save it and let's rerun that code in um, in the browser that we already have let's switch to console reload all right so now we're actually getting access denied error from backendless 
because we denied access for not authenticated users to uh, to that function. And if we were to authenticate as a user of that backendless application, meaning one of the registered users of our backendless app, uh, authenticate and then make that invocation, then that invocation will just go through. So backendless security fits in very nicely uh, to uh, guard access to various Lambda functions which are imported into your app. Uh, as far as uh, analytics, if you switch to manage and then analytics, you will see uh, on for the API calls, you will see all these invocations of the Lambda function directly here. So you'll see that the method name, hello world Lambda, we made three successful calls from JavaScript. One was an error call. That was the call that we did uh, with uh, uh, when the security access was denied. So you can see that the security that the analytics was gathered automatically for you. Uh, the possibilities are endless here. Uh, you can import any kind of Lambda function regardless of the language it is written and start integrating it into your backendless apps. We're very excited about this feature and uh, can't wait to see what you will be able to do with it. Thank you, and as always, happy coding.